What is up, my cauliflower crust pizzas? Corey Vincent here, and this is a new episode of Video Game Bang. It is December 12th, 2018. It's almost time for 2019, and I cannot wait to spend many years with this guy, Curtis Fisher. What is up, man? Man, not a whole lot. Just, you know, my Kings are playing. Uh, they're currently winning, although they were up by 13. Now they're down. Well, no, now they're only up by three. So I'm a, I'm a happy guy. You notice that that news that you decided to drop into your introduction is only valuable for that one second? Probably, like, but we didn't need to know the score, man. That's I appreciate all right. it because you love to give knowledge, but like when they hear this tomorrow, they're not going to care. Well, I guess they'll have a frame of reference for when we record it. So you knew the whole time. The whole time, man. Curtis, but plus, genius. people got to know my love for my Kings. I'm draped down in it. We playing, and a friend of ours uh, plays for the Kings, so he's in town as well. So I'm, I'm just Kings focused. But we're gonna get into some video games tonight. Yeah, we, we play those video, too. Yeah, yeah, we do sometimes. And then if that fails, we'll just go back to Kings news. Pretty much. We always got that. David Webb. What, what is, up? is up, people? How you been, dude? I've been good. Good. I had uh, some good rounds with you. Uh, Overwatch, an Overwatch last yeah, night. Yeah, we had, had a lot some, of fun. We had a good old fashioned uh, bro down with uh, Hello, I am Kate, the cosplayer. Yeah, that was cool. That was really random. Just running into her, like obviously <laughs> we see on the kill feed. Hello, I'm Kate. Killed, whatever your yeah. mom. and then and it was like, oh wait, what? And they proceeded to carry us for like four hours. She's a savage in uh, that maze uh, Wonderland thing. Yeah, the winter event is what we were we were getting down on. Yeah. Uh, you know who wasn't getting down on the winter Wonderland event was Emma Skies. What's no, up? No, I have not. I uh, I need to. I still need to get on the update. I just want the skins. I'm just in it for the skins. Which ones do you like? That Mercy one is legit. Yeah, mm. cute as fuck. Sugar Plum Fairy. That's right? Exactly how it's I cute. described it. Yeah. Uh yeah, I got the the Reaper one from last year. Uh, oh yeah, because you can get you can get other ones. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I haven't gotten any of the new ones either. I, all I got was uh, this is I got the last year's Soldier seventy six one mm -hmm. on my primary account and my alt account. Mm. So I the, Jeff really wanted me to have that. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, that in uh, the uh, Symmetra skin. Ooh, Ooh, that one's yeah, very nice. You're right. Yeah. Can't stand Symmetra. Love that skin. Uh, for the esports fans out there, I was pleasantly surprised that they released the away skins for all the Overwatch League. That games. was cool. But the coolest part about that was that they didn't make you buy them twice. If you, yeah. If you have the skin already unlocked for a character in orange, you have it in the away skin as well. Nice. That's automatically. Awesome. So good you're guy assuming Blizzard. they bought a shock skin. Of course they did. There's other teams out there. <laughs> So, we are brought to you by the lovely people at Oblivion Comics and Coffee, Sacramento's number one spot for comics and coffee. Uh, you got to go there during the holiday season. You get that hot, hot coffee, uh, and then you read some comics, and then you, you, you go off into the world and do great things. They got I new uh, bakery items, too. What? Yeah, they have like a whole new baker. There's like a lot more options. Uh, looks good. <laughs> I didn't eat any because I was near death. So, so what are you talking about? Like a new baker? Is it, are we talking breads? Are we talking cakes? Uh, what do we got? Uh, croissant. Oh, okay. You want uh, What was that? You want to not? I was I was trying to be fancy with it, and then I was like, "How do you say cro croissant? Croissant. croissant. Plural though. Croissant. No. Hmm. Oof. That's why I didn't take French. Yeah. Uh, I think this is actually going to have the the modifier in front of the word. Croissant. No. Okay. Like it's a whole ass other word. Oh, it's a like, whole... Like le croissant or yeah. le croissant. Like just, Ellie or L-E-S. That's just dumb. If anybody speaks French in here, do not call me on that being wrong. I I think we've offended all of France at this point. Eh, it's fine. <laughs> Bonjour, bitches. Uh, okay, so you can go there and get a croissant, because I'm an American. And then also you got to hang out with uh, mainframe.gg. You can go there and they have all sorts of clothes uh, and there's winter sales going on everywhere so mm -hmm. get on the website order you up some mainframe we were looking cute in our mainframe this last weekend at the sack gamer sexpo curtis what'd you think uh man it, it was it was fun uh it was good I, I really enjoyed the room that had like all the retro stuff in it um because so much of that stuff like i 
I would like, I would just like see like, you know, some of it from my past, some of it from online, some of it I used to own. So I, that was probably my favorite part next to, you know, just helping with the smash tournament, you know, yeah. Jake you know, helped him out. He had a huge Notice show. hanging with us did not make that list. <laughs> What? No, hanging out with us did not make. That I know. Work. I I I think he was leaving it to Webb. Maybe he was just being polite. <laughs> how was uh How was Jay's tournament though? I heard it had a huge turnout. Yeah, it did. It was good. Um, I had a whole pools that I got to take care of. We had plenty of setups. There was a Street Fighter Five tournament going on in as well. Um, yeah, it was just you know, it, it, it was lit. It was fun. Um, we had some good vendors out there as well. Um, uh, panels that I didn't get. I only got to view one of them at the very end. Um, but I, it was it was nice to listen in on it. Um, and then, of course, you know, for a whole like 15 minutes, I got to actually sit down and hang out with you guys. Oh, you softy. Cherry on top. You got to take our little family <laughs> photo. Yeah. Uh, David Webb, what did you think? I thought it was good. Um, it seemed bigger than last year. It yeah. It's like they've grown. You're a vet. We, I think both of us are. We've been at every single one of these. Yeah. And it does seem to get bigger each time. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, it was cool seeing uh, Andre Meadows is back. That's Again, cool. yeah. 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 We're Man. competing with him to see who could be the longest running guest on that show. Yeah, I think, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. We're tied right now. Right? Yeah, we're tied. No, no, we're ahead because he missed last year's. No, he was there. No, he got, uh, his flight got canceled. He got kicked out. Oh, yeah, you're right. Yeah. We beat him. Take that. Boom. Andre Did... Meadows. Yeah. There's one thing we beat you in. <laughs> it's Sack Gamer views. Expo appearances. <laughs> um, now, Emma, when we get to your, I, I just, I, I want to pick your favorite part for you because it was my favorite part. And we have a, a tradition at Set Gamers That's Expo. Right. There's a very particular individual who likes to crash our live panels. We didn't do one this year. <laughs> but he is the infamous, uh, SWAT Cats guy. <laughs> One of our best stories of all time when we did that live panel SWAT Cats guy. Do you think Callie Briggs is hot? <laughs> That part was great, but it was also the introduction to the show. Have you all ever heard of the Time Warner production? Yeah. SWAT Cats? <laughs> yeah. I've never heard anyone pronounce every single letter yeah. of the word. And sure enough, as soon as doors open. <laughs> the very open, first interaction I had. The first guy makes a beeline to VGB booth and tell it, David. <laughs> he, he comes straight. He actually came out of nowhere. He leans in. Like, like we, over the table. Emma, like super face, aggressive. Yeah. Face to face with Emma's face guys. To, face to face. They were breathing the same air. Yeah. He goes, <laughs> he goes, is that a Laura Bailey? <laughs> <laughs> is that you, Laura Bailey? And I was like, um, no. <laughs> and then he just goes. He, he just, just turns and walks away. away. Is that you, Laura Bailey? He was like so, like so ready for for me to be Laura Bailey. I feel bad that I'm not. <laughs> well, you clearly disappointed him because <laughs> we he didn't, didn't say a word. He just turned and left. <laughs> <laughs> he said peace. But the way he always steals the show. Like I don't know. What time? It, okay, so there was a SWAT cats one, and then the next the next year, I was in Andre's panel, like in the room, and. He raised his hand, and Andre was like, no, no, I remember you from last year. We're not going to talk about SWAT cats. <laughs> and he called somebody else. Oh, man. Jeez. Like I, I'm all, I, like that's probably he's probably my favorite part. I look forward to what he's gonna do or what he's gonna say because it's so unpredictable. Is that you? She wasn't even Laura Bailey wasn't scheduled to be there. Like, no, <laughs> no. <laughs> and I the, don't look like her. The way he, you, you're a brunette white woman. You look like Laura. That's Bailey. very true. We all uh, we do all look she, the same. I can confirm. It was almost like he was trying to see if she was like, if Emma like ate her or something. Is that you, Laura? Bailey? Are you in there? Are you in there? Oh, oh man. I feel like honestly, if he'd come up to me like in that attitude and just like, even if he had been like, "Is that you, Emma Skies?" I'd have been like, "Nope, no, <laughs> no, the fuck, it's not." Uh, he he's Emma Skies. <laughs> she just points to me. <laughs> like, I'm sorry, I don't know that name. Photoshop. Uh, but besides that weird part, uh, what did you think of the event? It was, it was good. I wish that I had been more alert and awake. I was so goddamn tired. There was I, a brief moment where you were awake. I was like that after that first Red Bull, I'd, I had four Red Bulls, which was the only thing that kept me standing. Yeah. Day. There was these, uh, the Red Bull representatives with these giant backpacks handing them out. And Emma was looking like she was 
gonna die so i think we all just gave ours to her <laughs> yeah and she through the process of a day went through all of them standing is is a it's a loose term in your case because <laughs> you and i went out to go get food at the food truck and i had to kind of like you know you know when you plant a tree and you have to put that like piece of wood next to it to yeah. kind of keep it from like falling oh yeah i had to be that the piece strut. of wood for emma oh wow you were the strut you were st her strut yeah uh -huh. i'm uncomfortable such a little strut. I get that all the time. That's what I no, I was just, but it was good. It was good. I wish I had gotten more time to walk around. I like peeked into the rooms before it like officially opened, and we walked to like the game museum a little bit. Uh, but no, it was good. It was a good time. I wish. I hope the next time I end up there, I'm not dying. Yeah. Well, thank you to the to Chris for all his hard work over there, helping the gaming scene have this uh, the Set Gamers Expo. It is pretty cool to see all these people come together. There's tournaments, the museum, there's the indie room where they got all the, you know they get to show off their games. So creating just another experience for us to get together and uh, yeah, thank you, thank you to them. Um, but here is I got I come to you guys with a little bit of bad news. Um, I do not have the soundboard. Uh, oh no. No, so, what a disappointment. I'm, I think Emma stole it. I'm so, oh dear, what are we going to do? I think what's going to have to happen, and this is, I'm never. going to have to be quiet. I know, I've never done this on the show before. Emma, I'm, I'm just going to let you decide what we do next. Because okay. th there's no soundboard to dictate it. Uh, there's no theme song. So uh, what do you want to do? Well, it is getting to the end of the year. Mm -hmm. We are in December. A lot of what is going to happen this year has happened. Oh, uh, don't say it like that. It looks like we have nothing left to live for. <laughs> well, a lot, a lot you know, of what's going to happen this, this year has happened. <laughs> no, it's, it is what it is. So uh, I thought we would maybe talk about what are your gaming highlights of the year. Not what you think was the best received or like the biggest thing, but your personal top three moments of the year in gaming. Okay. I like this. I like this little format. Thought we'd do a little, uh, little get to know you. Okay, little, I like some it. A little, AMA, some a little personal. An AMA. Again, this is your segment. You get to decide who goes first. The rules, the point system, anything you want. You want well, you want it's not a game, it? so there's no points. Okay. So there is that. Okay. I will judge so, you all for your highlights. Then it's a game. Well, it sounds no, like it's a Corey just game. Life. How? Yeah. It's just, damn. <laughs> How do we know who wins? Nobody. You win. It's your own personal highlights. We all hmm. win. Okay. Sounds like a millennial thing to me. It we does. It kind of seems like one of those. You know what? If y'all want to be miserable, I'll just make myself win. <laughs> <laughs> I can tell you you're all losers. I can do that. That sounds more like real life. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There it is. There's high school. Oh, boy. Uh. Uh, so I guess I'll just start. Oh, wow. Oh, deciding well, to, yeah, the host I'll, deciding I mean, to go first. The host. Yeah. That, the, the, that usually never happens. Traditionally, the host pick somebody else to start and I, then the host goes last i've been doing this show for like five years and the host has never gone first so i've been doing I'm, it for seven look at it look at us same. we are we are changing things up hmm. we are changing so things this up. Is progressive i know this if people who say this show isn't progressive look what's happening right now there's yeah. a woman in charge huh <laughs> we're all sjw's now <laughs> yeah we are <laughs> that on one guy lip. he knew he knew <laughs> he knew <laughs> he was aware uh, uh, so we didn't really talk about these before the show we're kind of keeping them fresh but Corey had asked me one of mine uh or asked me to, to say mine before so he could kind of get an idea and i said my first one and he immediately made fun of me and so i didn't say any other ones well you say it now now you get to say it and then every, now we'll all make fun of so you so these ahead. are in no particular order but one of my top moments of the year was the unravel 2 announcement at E3. Barf. You see? He's just making fun of me. It's so sad. That was nobody's favorite moment but yours. I think you were the that's only fine. person on earth that's putting that in your I'm okay three. with that. This is my personal highlight. Okay. That moment, if you saw that video, like, I was crying. I was yelling. It was so unexpected. I was so excited. The game itself, a bit of a letdown. But that announcement... I like that you can separate that. Yeah, I appreciate that. Yeah. I appreciate that you can to. separate the fact that even though the game was a disappointment, you were still really excited. Like, for the it. game was good, just the story wasn't there. Yeah. But, uh, no, that announced, like, I was so, I was so excited. I was, like, screaming and crying and jumping up. And, like, I just, I don't know what happened. I broke. <laughs> But uh, that was a that was a big one. All right. Well, sappy as hell. Uh, you know, I, I guess. And uh, do we want to do we want to go around and do firsts and then seconds and you, then thirds? Oh wow! Hey, Another bold you, choice. She is nailing this hmm. segment thing. You, the host, typically decides how how it, how oh, it runs. Oh well, then fuck it. That's how we're doing it. Web. 
Uh, you know what? Okay, no particular order. I'm gonna say Spider Man. Just the general. Game, the just game, the game. Just in general. Just character overall. Uh, everything that's come out. He had a good no. year. He did have a good he had, year. He had a baller year. Uh, no, but the game on PS4, it was uh, one of the best times I've ever had playing a game. And it was probably the second game that I actually wanted to put the time in, put the grind in, 100% it, get all the achievements, all of the trophies. It was the first time I platinumed the game on PlayStation, like... It was definitely a highlight of my year. All right. Uh, fair enough. Uh, Curtis, why didn't you pick this one up? I don't re- recall you being in on these reindeer games. Re- oh, uh, talking about Spider-Man? Yeah. We all, the PS4 is in Leak's room. And uh, he usually grinds on 2K on the PS4. And you don't want to get between Leak and his my career. <laughs> so... I'm keeping things copacetic. Um, mine, there'll be a reoccurring theme here, but um, I'll, I'm going to start from least to favorite, I guess. Um, this is still good. Lima and Captain Zack, uh, their Ooh, match controversy. to end Smash 4. Okay. I, I liked it because Bayonetta is such a controversial character. Um, from a great game, Lady Gaga, as we mentioned, you know, is <laughs> cramping her hands playing this game. This character came in broken like all new characters do, so people play them. And she got slightly nerfed, but as everybody knows, she's still OP, and people wanted her banned. So it was very telling that the last major Smash 4 event was two Bayonettas who sat with their guns out charging for like two minutes. Just to troll the audience. Just to troll the audience, which is against tournament rules. Eventually they had to play. There was homie stocks. But as much as I enjoyed Smash 4 while it was out, and we heard about toxic community and how Bayonetta is making things toxic, you can't write this the way that Smash 4 ended. Yeah. It was su- extremely controversial and highly entertaining if you were just objective about it and not saltying in your feelings that two bayonettas <laughs> were at the top. And I think the other part too of the story that was sad was uh, that Smash wasn't even ma- didn't even make it to Championship Sunday. No. So this stuff all happened on oh, yeah. a Saturday. Yep. With the game had already been snubbed, and imagine what would have happened if that ended up happening on the main stage. It would have been even worse. Yeah, it would have been. Oh. That's a good one. Uh, for me, uh, I'm going the personal route, and I had so much fun at TwitchCon this year. Barf. So I'm gonna put because uh, I got because I got to hang out personal. with my friend uh, David, and uh, you know make a new friend in Emma Skies. Ooh, uh, okay. I mean, I got to meet drunk Emma. That was a highlight. <laughs> you know, of, uh, that was part of one of the many TwitchCons. There are times when I like drunk Emma more. Than regular Emma. Agreed. <laughs> I think uh, we, you know, every party we went to had unlimited drinks. It was just wall to wall, just like the, like I said, it's the culmination. You meet these people you love from one community and then the other, and this is the one where they all come together and you get to make big introductions. You get to see people who you, you know, if you're on Twitch any amount of time, you know, you recognize and just get to, you know, admire, respect and learn more. And then you get charged up and come back and want to, you know, improve your own grind. So, yeah, I, I got the most, I think, out of that. We got to see our sponsors, like so much cool stuff. Yeah. Um, so TwitchCon for me uh, is definitely a highlight. Round two. How, uh, how'd we do in the first round? We all did fine, except for Corey. Damn it. Fine. Corey sucks. Uh, so part of the reason that like on the fly I decided that we're going to do this in like rounds is because I didn't want to take this from Webb because I knew this would be his. This would be Spider-Man, wasn't it? It's not even necessarily the game, like the Spider-Man game, but the first time that I just like fully started web slinging across the Oh city. my God. I didn't want to sound, I didn't want to sound like the review and be like, you actually you feel, feel like you're like web Spider-Man. slinging through the city. <laughs> But you feel like you're web slinging through the city. You do. Like the controls are so fluid and the graphics are so good and just like the atmosphere of everything. I was just like, holy sh! Like this is another level of a game. And yeah. like that first second where you're doing that, you're like, this is it. this is it. This is a fantastic game. This, this game is, the is gonna be phenomenal. Gaming. This is the future of gaming. There's times where I just boot up the game. I don't do any missions. I just swing around New York. Right. 
It's and nice. Take pictures, swing it's around peaceful. New York, clear my head. So, uh, yeah, I was like, you know what? I know this is going to be one of Webb's. I'm not going to take this from him. I'm going to I'm gonna assume that it's going to be his first one. I appreciate it because I said mine is the first when you said we're going to do rounds. I was like, yes. <laughs> Spider-Man. Boom. Called it. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, so that was that was a, so that was a get, solid moment. Do you get negative points for stealing David's moment? Kinda? No, there's no points in this game. Wait, but how am I losing? Okay. I just said you suck. I didn't say you're losing. I, I don't. All right. <laughs> Who's next? Web, round two. Uh, all right. Well, it's a good thing there's no points for stealing because I legitimately was going to pick this too. Uh, TwitchCon. Oh, you can't steal off of me, bro. No, I, I, I promise you. All right, that's fine. I'll allow it. But it has to be really good, though, your reasoning. Yeah, so, so like, yeah, for all this sappy crap that, that Corey said. But uh, it was, for me, it was kind of like a, um, like a reboot, I guess. Kind of, like, get really get back in into streaming and push and, like, really think about how to make my stream better. And uh, I bought like an actual like professional quality microphone. I got uh, you know inspiration for getting more like actual stream graphics and some animating. Met some cool streamers that um, you know I talked to, like I've seen online. Uh, I met like one guy that I've been really wanting to meet, um, who owns the Space Station Gaming. So that was really cool. Who was that? Uh, Sean Durris. Oh yeah, the yeah. YouTuber. You've been following that dude forever. Yeah, like I watch his YouTube videos, and uh, he he is often in YouTube videos with one of my other favorite uh, YouTubers, Casey Neistat, and uh, so it's really cool like meeting him. Um, and it it was fun shooting Emma with Nerf guns. Good times. Those are good. Sh- I shot her in the eye. She shot me in the tooth. <laughs> the Bonds were forged. <laughs> no, I think that was backwards. I think I hit you in the glasses, and you hit me in the tooth. That's what I said. I shot you in the eye and you shot... Nope. I You shot me in the eye and I shot you in the tooth. There you go. Nailed it. <laughs> All right. Uh, so we're, we're doing three rounds, right? Yeah. Because I just... I literally just came up with the rest of mine. All right. So go, go ahead, Curtis. Cool. Wow. Um, a recurring theme, the release of Super Smash Brothers Ultimate. This is a game I've been playing since... Gosh. 30... About to be 33 this month. Nintendo 64 came out in 96. Yeah, ish. Right okay. around there. Yeah. So, Since 20 years? Yeah. So. 20 years. I'm playing this game. And this is the best version. And I see people that I didn't think would play it playing it. Like, on their streams, like, in real life. Like, people. It's just, it's everywhere. And it's infectious. And I don't know, like, it was already the best fighting game out there. I don't understand how he made it better. And not just a little better, like, a lot better. Yeah. You've played it. You've played it. Emma, have you played it yet? I have not. Okay, no worries. <laughs> it Like, it is, it like, it's more visceral. It's more physical. You feel it more. Yeah. We got more characters. How do you how do you take so many characters from so many different franchises and pack them all into a world and respect their game yet put them in a whole different world and and it's so seamless. Yeah. Masahiro Sakurai is my favorite game developer ever, my favorite game director easily. Um the release of this game it's it might beat out Resident Evil 2 as my favorite game ever. Dang. Whoa. It this, might be. This, Whoa. Is hitting, this is hitting the, the goatee list. This Absolutely. is the top of all time. Easy. Easy. It, it felt very similar to the original right. to me. Yeah. And which which is like I, I had I had the original mm-hmm. and then I think the next one that I actually owned mm-hmm. was uh the one on the DS. Okay, uh, yes. Smash Brothers for so basically Smash Four. So, but yeah, so yeah. Smash Four, mm-hmm. uh, and then this one's like the first one I actually like want to pick up. Like, I'm actually gonna go home and and, and buy it to on Amazon. So like, it's I'm pretty excited for it. I think this one and this is like a cliche I have never used on this show. You can go back and listen to all the episodes. I guarantee you'll never hear me say this, but I believe Smash Ultimate is a love letter. To the Smash oh fans. Oh my god. Seriously, I've never used that before. No, season you, one, you, episode I, this, is, this is season the moment. Two, no, episode I haven't. 21? No, I haven't. I swear. I think that's I, I've always thought that's the cringiest saying. But like when I when I launch that game, it truly is. Like mm-hmm. it's it's like you get every character that ever existed. So you're not feeling gypped like we have all in the past. The mechanics and the gameplay is so smooth. It's like they took the best parts of each one yeah. almost 
and stack them together. And then people who really love this game are into the music. They were like, here's every fucking track every in every compressed format. <laughs> you, can re you can play this map on whatever one you want and use this song. If you want to hear these, th you can do anything you want with the music, basically. The same thing with the stages. You get every single stage's aesthetic that's ever come out, yep. and then you could transform it whether you want it in, in Smash mode or whatever, where yeah. it's got the, the three the platforms, platforms. Yeah, so it's battlefield. legal for tournament, or yeah, battlefield mm -hmm. mode. Or you could turn it into Omega mode. Yep, FD, Final Destination. And if you can't, yeah, yeah. If you can't choose, you're a huge fan, you, you want to play on not just one map at a time, yeah. you can choose like you multiple can maps, and while you're playing, it fades from one to the other. That's so cool. Like, they just said, here, you want everything? Here it is Here's in a giant everything. hot tub. You just jump in and have some fun. And that's why I think it really is like the love letter to the fans. <laughs> it's exactly the size, opposite. They won't give us Wario. For whatever, or, Wah. Waluigi. Wah. Yeah. Waluigi. Yet. 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 That's Wah. the only thing yeah. missing. Yep. And, and there's DLC. They already announced that there's going to be the characters. We already got one, uh, Persona 5, Joker. Joker. So, like, Waluigi, I got a feeling, will probably be the last one or the second to last one that we get. Yeah. But that's that's mine. The launch of Super Smash Brothers. Clearly it's I like everybody it. agrees too because this game is selling like fucking crazy. Yeah. It's like going nuts. Cakes. Yeah. It sold 1.2 million copies over the first what three days in Japan. <laughs> yeah. and, that, yeah. and, I, and those are just physical sales. It didn't, yeah. count it didn't even count the downloads. And I think the I was looking at it, the last one that got even close was uh, Super Smash for the 3DS in yeah. like 2014. Yeah. yeah. And mm -hmm. it sold 944,000 in the first three days. Mm -hmm. So it was like we're going to take this Mm -hmm. And then we're going to add another 300,000 in sales yeah. on it. Yeah. And then go fuck yourself. <laughs> Pretty much. Uh, my round two one is big on a personal level and uh, just like a historic level for my life almost is being a part of the inaugural season of the Overwatch League. Uh, that started in January of this year. And I mean, it felt like we were prepping for it all through 2017. So when that first watch party hit, you know, and we were seeing what Overwatch League was going to be when they booted up the first broadcast. And yeah. we're seeing this team that, in theory, we put so much time and hours into promoting and marketing and interviewing and all this crazy stuff. And then this is game day. It felt like that feeling I would have uh, in school when you're in a play. And yeah. It's opening night. And you're waiting for the curtains to pull open mm -hmm. and that feeling like, oh, my God, I'm going to see people for the first time. Like yeah. this baby, we put so much work into building these teams and these rivalries and all this stuff. And here's here it is, guys. Like we built that logo from scratch. The colors didn't exist. Like it, it was our baby getting pushed off into the world for the first time. And right. That's why that inaugural day, like the first day of the actual opening season of Overwatch League is a huge day for in all-time gaming moments for me was that the that was the watch party that was in san francisco right at that barcade thing? no no that no? was preseason. uh i'm talking about the little one we did with um at oblivion oh yeah so i made like a little strung together watch party because uh i didn't go actually to boots on the ground it was super limited and packed so i couldn't make it right I, I killed to be in that room but the next best thing was just put a post on reddit like didn't hound a bunch of personal friends or something like yeah. I just put a post on Reddit and we packed the little area yeah There's people I didn't know you know who were impacted by they recognized me from the interview videos like they they followed all our Twitter campaigns leading up to the event like it was like these are the people like theoretical people because when you right. when you're stuck in this house in VGB Studios making content for social media you don't actually get to see people consume it no and if you can see the look on their faces when they're enjoying your content like that's the feeling of meeting someone who's you know into this you know right. it's such a niche thing still so that's it that's cool and I'm just being sappy <laughs> gross tis, tis the season alright round three you guys make your last choices make them good if you got any honorable mentions throw them in there uh, but my uh, my last highlight of the year should come as no surprise to anybody. It was getting that 150th egg on Spyro. <laughs> <laughs> it really was. That was such a big moment. I was like, like honestly, the whole game was a was a highlight. Like booting it up and hearing the music and like seeing my, seeing my boy, seeing little Spyro. I was just like, this is a shit. I used to play this when I was like, you know, fucking six years old. Yeah. But uh, getting that last egg that I had been completely up until this point, literally unable to do. I'm just like, you know what? 
Fuck you, life. I did it. <laughs> Y'all thought you could keep this from me. You can't. Technology <laughs> brought it, it back. It took me 20 years, but suck it. I did it. I knew Sparrow was going to be in there. Yeah. Yeah. That was a good I one. just didn't know what capacity. Just everything. everything. Just everything. But just yeah, that uh, that last egg, which is actually what? Uh, twin. It was, like, it was like twin dragons. It was, it was a beautiful moment. That's so Hanzo. That's Hanzo egg. Uh, you have honorable mentions? Ah. Uh, so nothing off the top of my head other than yeah no hmm, okay uh that's gotta be negative points yeah i was what if that would have been you know hanging out with us at twitchcon but that's great i know uh, she obviously didn't bring us up in any of these so whatever <laughs> so <laughs> number three for me is uh being able to actually start working in the gaming industry field like, that was really cool, like, getting hired by Vast and uh, doing, you know, community manager uh, stuff for them and then, you know, helping with the social media. And uh, we got more stuff around the corner for 2019, so I'm really excited about that. And uh, it's uh, it was really, it was really cool because, like, since I've been doing the show, that was always kind of like, it was like, build the show, make the show a success, uh, like, A, and then B is, like, springboard into like the gaming industry and get a career doing this just like like you did with you know energy and shock and uh the fact that that actually happened was like it was really cool i was really excited about it hard work paying off in a yeah no totally and you're with a really good group of people too oh yeah uh a lot of people you hear you know you start going to some of the events and talking how do you get into this thing man when you start getting to that that phase of the night yeah and you hear people go through a lot of awful companies yeah deal with some really shitty people so uh you're in with some good folks and yeah uh, yeah the the future is bright for 2019 it's uh it's good um honorable mention i'm gonna say uh i'm gonna throw in being able to i obviously wasn't involved at the capacity that you were involved at but being able to go to these watch parties for like sf shock meeting the players uh you know like the the big one uh that we just had the california cup yeah you know got to go into like the back room where like the players who like were like they're on the bench or whatever sitting there watching and uh like just chilling with like eating pizza with baby bay right next to me <laughs> as we watch like you know the the match like it was just pretty cool, like, being in that, like, environment. Like, met people from Discord through the watch pop parties. Like, uh, it was cool. It was yeah. good. Good ones. Your last one, I hope it's thought very – because this, this is going to somehow top uh, Smash for you, right? Yeah. Are, are you building them up that way? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Emma didn't state the rules, so I apologize. No, that's okay. Uh, uh, wait, I'm winning. I'm not winning. There's no points. There's no points. Uh, I There's think no points. And I think you're winning somehow right. still. But you suck somehow. Yeah, but I suck. Right. Yeah. I think that's the only rule to the game. You suck. Corey yeah, sucks. I suck. Okay. I can do that. Um, uh, wait, what? The, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Did that happen? Maybe. Yeah. Anyway. Are we, are, are we still saying phrasing? Honorable mention. Yeah. Honorable mention. Just starting a Twitch channel. Nice. Like, I was okay. I transitioned. Uh a lot of things were changing in my life at that time. And you know, I didn't you, you know, especially when you're with a group of people, you 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 kinda can play off of each other's, you know, strengths and yeah. you build a chemistry and stuff. Sometimes you go and you do some stuff, you know, you gotta do it all by yourself. You're like, I don't know if I can am I entertaining? Am I funny enough? Well I like it. Well, you know, you never know how it's going to go. Um, and I'm so used to being on a team, but, you know, doing my own streams on my own channel and still tiny, still small, still trying to, you know, nail different things down and tech issues and all that. But it was nice to just find out that there that there really are kind of like minded or pe- even people that think different. But you guys can, you know, agree on the game or you guys can, you know, talk about the topic and enjoy it. Mm-hmm. Twitch has been a community unlike any other for me. I was always really, really interested in YouTube, um, and I still enjoy it and consume it, but Twitch is a whole different thing. And I just really, really love how people band together and share ideas and share tech and camera techniques and lighting techniques and uh, and then go and support each other and you can host each other and people pop in each other's streams. It's one of the coolest communities I've ever been a part of. Yeah. So that's my honorable mention. Uh, I'll keep my actual one short. Uh, games, we get we grow attached to them 20 years on Spyro, 20 years on Smash, all the different games that we're into, or even if it's less time, 
games that are dear to our heart. And th these are the things that we come together on, as I kind of referenced before. Chris Taylor um, was a, I believe, a 21-year-old uh, young man who, you know, was in the Smash community, and he loved Smash as well. He had cancer. And he was concerned that he would not be able to play Super Smash Brothers Ultimate before it, before it came out because he knew that he didn't have very much time left. And the, one of the most gracious things, probably the most gracious thing I've seen in the gaming community all year, um, but of course I'm so close to Smash, is that Nintendo made it so he was able to play Super Smash Brothers before he died. Damn. That's awesome. And it wasn't out yet. They <laughs> broke all the rules of the stuff that you're not supposed to do. They took it to him in his hospital where he was and Aww. he played. That's, That's awesome. so cool. Yeah, and uh, his brother reported you know, uh, you know, a few weeks later that he did pass away, but he was so thankful that his brother got to do his favorite thing that he yeah. in the whole world before he passed away. Aww. That was my highlight. That's awesome. Yeah. Follow that up, Corey. <laughs> I, I, you know what? I don't even have to try hard because like, yeah, I, mine is very similar. It no, was it was the play. make a wish yeah. with Riley. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Heck yeah. Like, that was gonna be mine, and then I, I had to take this one. Yeah. Yeah. Like I I didn't know what to expect going there. Like mm -hmm. like I kind of expressed a little bit on the show yeah. like that week and the week before like yeah. were not good weeks for me right and uh i just kind of had that that feeling where you're just going through the motions and you're like i don't know existential and and all this weird stuff and then that experience and seeing riley's joy and how video games tied it all together that made nairo the guy that he wanted to see more than anything mm -hmm. and and then just the day like I, I don't know. I learned so much just about life in that day, mm -hmm. like, uh, and how it tied into video games. And I've, I don't know. I, I made that my first ever like in Instagram like story like thing that stays there. You yeah. know, like the Instagram oh, story that doesn't go. Yeah, like a highlight. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I still go to that thing almost once a week and just look through the pictures and just. Just when I'm feeling down or whenever I you know have a pick me up or I'm just on my page, I'm like, oh shit. Let's look at that again, and yeah. it, it yeah. just always gives me that that feeling. Like it, it was such a, I mean, I'm I, I do, I'm I'm not a nice guy, you know. He's not a nice guy. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I do stupid things, I do bad things and stuff, but like that will ever for ever ever be a moment of like, man, I I was a part of something really good, and yeah. I, that's that's the feeling of good. Absolutely. And yeah, I don't know. And then, uh, uh, honorable mention. <laughs> <laughs> For me, it was uh, the Outer Worlds trailer that just came out. Uh, it, it was a sleeper hit. It happened right here, like a week ago. I was sitting on this computer. Emma was like, oh, yeah, they dropped a trailer for this thing called uh, The Outer Worlds that had a thing in it that said about Fallout. And I was, I, I, I watched it and got that feeling of, like, this is going to be... This could be a really good. This could also set me up for the biggest disappointment. That's what I was just about to say. <laughs> well, could be another Fallout seventy six. This could be yeah. a highlight of twenty eighteen and an absolute low point of twenty nineteen. It could be, but I feel like from what I saw from it, <laughs> it was a cinematic. It was right? a cinematic. It was a cinematic. It was Don't a, get excited. It was a cinematic, but they're they're telling you stuff through it, like that yeah. whole part about the decision making. That's all I want in an RPG. You know, kill me or kill her. You have to kill one. You don't kill any, and they're like, "Oh, that's an option too." Like, that's what I want. It's just a cutscene that it's never comes up again. Scene. It in, better in it, <laughs> every every mission better have unlimited options of ways I can handle it, people I can align with or kill off to yeah. lose the entire story if I wanted to. Like, that's what I love about those original Fallout games. And it better have a karma system. You know, like, uh, speaking of the Fallout games, you guys, you and Chris were talking about Smash and talking about how the Nintendo basically said, oh, you want everything? Okay, here's everything that you ever <laughs> wanted. Yeah. And then contrast that with, like, Fallout, Fallout 76. 76 and how <laughs> they, they, they almost did it. Oh, you want Fallout multiplayer? Okay, here's this. And, and they like hand it to that. you and snatch something out. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's one or the other with them. Whereas like Nintendo was just like, here's everything you could ever want and more. Yeah. Like Fallout was like, or Bethesda was like, all right, here's our Fallout games. You have options A through Y. You got all this shit, but you guys want Z too. All right, we'll give you Z. Here's just Z. Yeah. <laughs> you don't get anything else that you liked before. Just this shit. Oh, and we're going to fuck it up. You wanted X, Y, and... No, we can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good. I don't good know. I, I See, I had I used to have this fight with uh, Aaron all the time about 
the, the RPGs and whether you can even do it in multiplayer. And this this is a game where if this game said two player, I'd be like, fuck, like way to ruin it. Because yeah. I want this game to be just a really good single player RPG with not even the option to have you watch me while I'm playing. <laughs> <laughs> Can't even stream it. Yeah, I can't even stream it. You, this game is meant to be played in in the On privacy, your own, so you can find. Yeah, because I don't with these types of RPGs, I go soul searching. I'm trying to find out more about myself in these decisions I'm making. <laughs> yeah, you know, and so I I don't want to let outside influence of people watching me or something even taint that. Mm-hmm. I'm not but, even gonna tell you what decisions I made. I'm just gonna play it and revel in whatever I turn out to be. So that's why that one is my honorable mention. Well, let's hope it doesn't completely destroy you next year. Uh, well, we always have uh, Cyberpunk to fall back on. I bet that doesn't come out next year. No. I bet we don't see it until at least Are we doing predict- uh, predictions on Hang the next on. show? Oh, you know what? Hang on. <laughs> Good. Hang on. We might have a retraction because mm. Crackdown 4. Three. Nope. Three. Crackdown 3. Three. That's still not out yet. What game was I uh, just cause? Were you just saying cause just cause? Four. Four, was it going to come out this year? No. Or was it Crackdown it that you crackdown. were saying? Fuck, never mind. I was you know, like, I, I don't know where he's going I, with it. I have a retraction. We don't have a retraction. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, Crackdown 3 is still slated to come out mid-February. I still don't buy it. I, I will not believe that game is even ever going to come out until I have it installed and I'm literally playing it. No, because then Microsoft could just give you an update and it's gone. That's what I'm saying. Like, <laughs> that's uh, Terry Crews Simulator, right? Uh, yeah, except okay. that Terry Crews isn't actually in it. Well, okay, Wait, now I'm not no buying way. it. Now I don't right? He's like, he's in, he does the commercials, but he's not actually no, in the game, right? No, I think right? he's the actor. Is he the voice I actor think for it? so. You wanna, you're he sitting in front better of the computer. Be. If he's not, computer. then... then That was false advertisement. Oh, you know what? I'm, I'm confusing it with uh, Doomfist. Because <laughs> people got so hyped for like Terry Crews' Doomfist that he wasn't. I think I'm getting that confused. Who who develops Crackdown? Microsoft? I was gonna say other than Microsoft. Is it Microsoft? Microsoft? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Like because, it's the first party. Because like Terry Crews went to like Blizzard and like that's there was the one that fucked stuff. everybody up. And that's what I'm saying. So I was trying to see like, is there like a like a sub studio of Blizzard or something that does crack down and that's why he was there and then it's all like, oh, what do you no. even think about that? Or no, he just went and visited Blizzard because. Yeah, yeah, no, Overwatch. that's uh, because that's coming out. Uh, like that's one of those Game Pass Day ones because it's first party. Hmm. So I will not believe that game's coming out until I physically own it. Are you going to... Do you have the Games Pass? No. Are you going to... Do you plan on getting it? Mm-hmm. Oh, Because okay. I love Crackdown. I, I played the fuck out of that game. That game was phenomenal. One, right? Yeah. Thank I don't you. really remember two that much. Two was multiplayer. Not... It was... It was a It was okay. <laughs> they give you plastic bags. <laughs> uh... <laughs> Are you? Do you have? You don't have Game Pass though, right? No. He are you going? No, I know. So, are you going to get Game Pass? No, I'm just going to buy the game. Oh, okay. I saw the, I oh no! Yeah. I what saw, about I you? you? Are you getting the Game Pass? I have the Game Pass. I've had it for a few months. Oh, okay. Yeah. Are we calling it the Game Pass? Yeah, the we're game calling pass. it the Game Pass. Just like we say the eighty, the five. You guys yeah. are old. The fifty? No, because we're cool. We're from Southern California. No, you're That's not. How they say it down there. You don't know my life. <laughs> I do actually. <laughs> well, um. I, I know that the podcast gods get mad when we don't worship them with uh with our theme song, so I think we're gonna have to do a oh, live no. in studio no, acoustic no, version no. of the new Emma theme song. Please don't. You guys ready? Are, are we ready? Are you guys ready? Emma Emma Emma, Emma. Oh God It's telling the news. That can you please cut that in post? That was just embarrassing. <laughs> I'm embarrassed for you. I thought we killed it. I no. hit that high C note. Something died. Do you even know what a high C note is? Because uh, it wasn't that. It's nope. something that you sing as you drink high C. A high C note. Well, that'd be you high C juice. Me at every turn. High C juice. High C juice. Yeah. That was, of course, the uh, Emma's Telling the News theme song. I hate all of you. Done live by Curtis Fisher, David Webb, and myself, Corey Vincent. Uh, you now have the floor. All right. So... <laughs> I mean, I kind of had the floor before, but that's fine. Oh, you kind of kept the floor. I did. Wow. I did. I hold, 20, held on to it. I think 2019 is going to be a progressive year for Video Game Bang. Uh, so the DC crossover finished last night. Oh, so you spent all your life trying to catch up on this. I D- did. Did, did. Did it meet your expectations? It was actually very good. It was actually... Why are you shaking your head? You didn't see it. Uh, no, because I know the most important part of, well, yeah. of it. So I won't, we won't get into spoilers because I know at the very least Webb wants to catch up on it. But we will talk a bit about Batwoman because that was something that we had talked about previously. Yeah. I was 
not hype for the casting. I was a little mean about the casting. You were very mean about it. I You're think about that sometimes. Yes. Aggressively mean. I feel bad about you it. You hold on to that one? And all the shit you've said about... Okay. <laughs> <laughs> <That's> so... <laughs> We'll Not start. anything that you said about me. Okay, yeah, okay. Yeah, yep. whatever. Yep. Yeah, yeah, sure. <laughs> but feel bad to this, you know, hot supermodel actress who has Australian. Unlimited. Yeah, Australian. I do, I do feel bad. Okay. Uh, but okay, so Batwoman comes out. I have my issues with it, but a lot of them are with the. It has a couple different things that are you know just with the character or the design or the way the show did it. But most of them aren't with her. I think she. I think she's actually fine. And I say I think. Because she is in so little of this that I actually can't tell. And I'm really mad about it. Mm-hmm. They hyped this so much. They, like, got us all, like, in a tizzy about it. Yeah. And then she's in it, like, maybe five minutes in so, the second episode, and that's it. So, question. I know it's limited, small sample size, but with what you did see, did you get enough to get a sense of whether she could carry a whole show? Not really. Okay. I think... I think she could do well as Kate. Okay. Um, I don't know if she can carry Batwoman. Okay. I think Kate Kane, she does she does all right with. What annoys me immediately when they introduce her is that she has, you know, her own hair, her Ruby Rose hair. Her hair is like a side shaved brown pixie cut. And that's just like the red hair is a mask glued into her or is a wig glued into her mask. I thought that was weird. I was like, what the I mean, I mean, okay, hang on, though. Hang on. The one thing that I will say of why I'm okay with that is let's put this into the real world, okay? You have somebody who has this small mask and very identifiable bright red hair. Are we not going to talk about Supergirl here? No, that's my point exactly, is that you have all these other characters. You have Green Arrow for the first 10 seasons had oil paint on his eye (laughs) and a fucking detective could look him square in the eye and not know that it's fucking Oliver Queen. Who he's known his whole life. Who he's yeah. known his whole life. Yeah. But Batwoman, she doesn't have the same hair. She's cut Like, it makes sense to me. But it diverges so much from, from what's the already in the, the universe in the show. Right. No, I get it. It's stupid. I get why it's stupid, but I also see the merit in it. It's just like one of those things that I was like stupid annoyed about i'm like it's not a big deal it doesn't change your character but i'm stupid annoyed about it and then the other thing with the hair is they did like the thing where they want to make somebody like they do this a lot with female characters you'll notice this if they have like if they're a badass they'll have hair that like covers half their face or it's like over one eye and it's just like oh, that's how you know cut. the emo cut that's like, how you know like fuck that don't mess with she'll them. fuck you up that's i'm it. like yeah. this bitch needs to see <laughs> <laughs> she has no depth perception she can't tell what she's hitting. She doesn't know what's going on. I was like, come on. let's." The bat sense. That's CW for you. That's though, just I CW. Mean. That's just like design stuff. Yeah. But so the idea, I think, was that they're going to see how the reception is for this and then decide if they're going to green light her show. Mm-hmm. Um, they definitely left it open for it because you have a storyline for her show now. Okay. And they explained how why she is there and Batman's not. Okay. Uh, Do they actually say who he is? They say Batman? Yeah. Wow. There's actually, it's actually very funny. Um, it's like a little spoiler, but whatever. Because uh, you guys aren't going to watch it. No. Um, but I read a headline that was, uh, ba- it basically said, it said the, the part two of Elseworlds was an hour long roast of Oliver Queen. <laughs> <laughs> and it really was. It's just an hour of them making fun of him. But they talk about going to Gotham and Barry gets all excited. He's like, oh, we're going to see the Batman. And Oliver's just like, Batman's not real. Oh, like, He's really? He's stupid. Batman's not real. And they're like looking at him like, what the f- no, which Oliver? Because they're flip flopped, right? Like, like Oliver, o- Oliver, o- Oliver, Oliver. Yeah. Okay, and he, but he he's firmly... Flash though, in the Elseworlds, right? Yeah, at that point, yeah, he okay. was. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So he like firmly believes that Batman is not real, yeah. and they're like, "Are you cr-? like you've seen how much shit, right? And you don't believe Batman's real?" And he is so adamant. I think his line is, uh, "He says Batman is an urban legend propagated by the Gotham City Police Department." To scare criminals. I am the original vigilante. Wow, <laughs> like, that's good. It's like such wow. a moment of like, he just wants to be the only one, the first one, the best one. Perfect. I'm like, well, this it, is just everything. He, his, his Green Arrow is so much like Batman. Yeah. That it's kind of like, well, yeah, because there can only be one. But hmm. they, in the in the crossover, they, they go to Gotham and you find out that Batman has disappeared for whatever reason. Like Batman and... he's not real. 
Yeah. Batman and Bruce Wayne <gasps> disappeared three years ago, and, like, nobody's seen them since. Mm, nobody okay. knows where they are. In the show, and I guess they've done this in some comics. Um, I guess Kate and Bruce are cousins, and so that's how she has that connection to him. Uh, and she's kind of, like, working out of a dilapidated Wayne Tower. Okay. That's so, pretty cool, but they Captain phasma her, though. Yeah, they, put they her really on, did. They promoted the shit out of it and then give you two seconds. So They spent more time in Arkham Asylum than they did interacting with Batwoman. Do you see them moving quickly into a television series, or is she going to get played out through uh, a developing storyline and then get her own thing? I, I don't know. Because I don't know their production time on this. So if they haven't already started production, I feel like the earliest we could see a show would be next fall. Okay. All right. I think it's kind of deceptive for them to be like, oh, let's just see how she does in this and then go base and then decide if we're going to do a show. It, and then only have her in there for like five minutes. Right. Like not give us enough yeah, time. Because like you could be like, they can come back to the producers and be like, people are clamoring for more Batwoman. It's like, well, yeah, because we saw thirty seconds of her. Yeah. So, so question: Why would they? Why would? Why would they hype her up so much and then give us not just a little? Because mm. they can't give us like the whole thing. But why would they give us so little? Uh, because they suck. Uh, the I, I think that Flash and Arrow mm -hmm. are are dipping in terms of popularity and how mm -hmm. many people are watching them. Okay. And so I think that they're they're trying to hype it up to kind of get more momentum momentum back onto the onto these two shows. They definitely there's, could use more momentum. There's a lot of people that fell off of it. I, I fell off for a while and I caught up to the current season. Right. Um but I think that's what it is. I think they're trying to like like guys look, we're bringing more people in like mm -hmm. and then you get the MS guys of the world that will binge watch your last five seasons just to so that it all makes and sense. And all legally I actually, <laughs> Why I actually watched them all legally. <laughs> Why is that a surprising thing? You always do everything legally. Yeah, Here totally. on BGB, yeah, we on only BGB. do legal things. Yeah. Right. That's I'll, our just, tagline. I'll just say that I saw, I've seen R Ruby Rose in quite a few things. And I'll also say, you know, they shot more than five minutes worth of footage. I hope so. They, I mean, they made that whole ass suit. So yeah. You think that that's it, maybe? That the content was just not good? And they're like, maybe we'll just uh, give oh, her some no. classes. Oh, I just figured. Yeah, I just And you know that. what? Because we had talked about this before, my, my my hesitation on Ruby Rose had been that, like, she always plays the same character. Mm -hmm. That is true here as well. She is playing Ruby Rose. Yeah. It just so happens that I think that kind of swagger that she has works for Kate in a way that I wasn't sure it would. But she's still just playing Ruby Rose. It's I've, not a departure from anything she's ever done. I've no. only seen her in one other thing, and that's Orange is the New Black. You didn't see the uh, John Wick movie? No. no I think Wick? that's the only... Uh, I've seen her in, like, clips of other stuff. But, yeah, she... Uh, like, she's just playing herself. And it works. I like the dynamic. She and Supergirl have a really nice dynamic because, like, that. Supergirl knows who, who she is, obviously. Okay, nice. She can see through the fucking mask. <laughs> there's, a, there's, a pic, there's a picture where it's the two of them together and I instantly thought I've been binge watching Silicon Valley and I instantly thought it's one of the earlier seasons where uh, they bring on a female coder mm -hmm. and Jared keeps trying to get I think her name is Kara Kara and Monica the, the oh, investor yeah. to, oh, be friends. to be friends like oh, oh yeah. <laughs> Monica likes uh, grilled cheese sandwiches too just like you Kara uh, here why don't I move so you two could sit <laughs> <laughs> next thing you know she's gonna bring her friend Cunty to work <laughs> God damn! <laughs> that was the funniest. Oh my but god! But they actually, yeah, they actually do uh, have a very nice dynamic with each other. Hmm. That's good. Um, mostly because they understand each other. Like they, like Kara knows who Bruce is, and she knows who Kate is, and Perfect. and and Kate knows about her cousin and everything. It's a whole thing. So it's kind of <laughs> so so it, that feels a little like Batman versus Superman a little to me. Like the two coming together, like. You just this. like vigilantes going around in <laughs> cities. Well, maybe a man in a cape should be under some sort of authority. Like the degrees of separation, the tension seem like it yeah. could be a. Cool I feel dynamic. like it's a good just it's a good juxtaposition of like when this happens with two men, yeah, and when this happens with two women, yeah, 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 yeah. right, 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 <laughs> they can exactly. Get along and coexist and are smart about it and I understand. Like it. Does Kara keep uh, keep track of um of Kate's heartbeat too, just like Batman does? Yeah. No. Uh, yeah. Oh, Superman does for Batman? Superman. Okay. Uh, what else we got? Uh, my phone turned off because I was talking for too long. Uh, 
We are talking about Smash sales already. Oh, some developers are already pulling out of Steam in favor of Epic Games' new store. I had seen this. So uh, a little follow-up action. We were talking about uh, Epic making their own game store. Who are, are these relevant games? Right now, they're, they're things I haven't heard of. It's smaller studios. So Coffee Stain Studios is pulling a factory simulator called Satisfactory. Uh, Team 17 is moving the launch for Genesis Alpha 1, and Double Damage's uh, Rebel Outlaw Galaxy will be Epic exclusive for at least a year. And he actually put out a, a whole like statement about it, and one of the things that they said was the only way this gets, this being the Epic Game Store, gets any traction is with exclusive content, and we're willing to be the ones, the canaries in the mine shaft. Oh, like, wow. We're, we're willing to put ourselves out there and be the ones that are over there. They That's pretty cool. They nice. believe in the vision. Yeah. That's pretty cool. I... I kind of hope we see a trend here I, I was talking to some other people from like work about it recently and it was pretty much echoing the same things that steam's just been doing it wrong for way too long and the stance that they've taken on even some of the morality things we've talked about mm -hmm. in games before it's just kind of telling that you know these people have gotten complacent and they need something to shake this up and yeah. hopefully epic does it right I could see Epic being like the the bright and the clean and the shiny new and like like they have standards and they have morals and then you they have, pay you more money they pay you yeah. more money and then you got Steam which has basically become like the four chan of the <laughs> gaming yeah. Not wrong. stores and Epic is just like keeping it good like good guy Epic they keep getting good news they just announced that they are releasing their um their cross platform services that they use for Fortnite to all developers in 2019 wow so if you want to make wow. your game cross platform. You can use all of the services Epic Games has, whether it's party chat across platforms, achievements across platforms, nice. uh, wow. matchmaking, like all this shit will be available throughout 2019. They're just going to give it away to everybody because they want cross-platform to be a thing. Sick. They, uh, wow. so that, they, they've hit the point. They just got so much money. They're Elon Musk in it right now. Yeah. Yeah. It was like, yeah. we're going to do all the stuff the people want, bitch, because <laughs> we can and we'll have enough money for our children's children's children. <laughs> so let's fuck shit up. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck, they're just yeah. like, you want this? All right, we'll do it. Meanwhile, on their esports end, uh, they did their first winter skirmish. It's like a million dollar tournament for Jesus. solos, and uh, they had a qualification, and this was the first one. And they just put a patch out like the day of or the day right before of this new Infinity Sword. Oh my god! So it's basically Excelsior. You yeah. Know, you, nice. There's only one of them on the map. You have to get there. You pull it out, yeah. and then you can like basically Excalibur. two shot Does he mean everything. Excalibur? He means Excalibur. What did I say? Excelsior. Excelsior. Same thing. So anyways, you get the sword. <laughs> you rip it through things. You can collect. You can use it to collect materials. You can jump across the map. You can, you're basically impossible to beat with this thing. Yeah. They drop that into the game during the tournament. Yeah. Oh. So like all your pros are just kind of thrown off by this RNG yeah. weird thing that doesn't really make sense yet. And you, yeah, it, it was a bad look. A lot of people are very upset. They hate the sword. Yeah, but, I saw a lot of pros like complaining about like pretty much just the timing of it. Just yeah. like yeah. they were really disappointed in that whole tournament. It's a bummer, but like the the thing that there's someone still gonna get a million bucks out of it. So yeah. it's it's whatever. But uh, good on you, Epic. What else we got? Uh, boosting, which I had to look up the definition of. I think we all had to look up the definition of. Yeah, we were all I wrong did. about no, it. I was, I was right. He was, Web, Web, Web was right. Uh, boosting is now officially illegal in South Korea. That is crazy. Punishable by law. That's how big gaming is in you South Korea. You could die. Cheating in a video game is punishable by law now in And not South even Korea. like a slap on the wrist. Like up to two years in prison or a $20,000 fine. So... North, uh, Dollars, North Korea, won. South Korea. There you go. There you go. Uh, has always been like I feel like the the forerunner in gaming. Like they've had pro gaming for years, like way before they've had gaming came. since gaming. Yeah, they've had gaming since gaming. Safe to yeah. say they have. Joel's there right now, and Who? he. <laughs> uh, so it makes sense that they would be the one, the first ones to actually make it illegal to boost in a game. We, we should probably explain what boosting well, is. So boosting is uh, paying someone to log into your account and rank you up. Yeah. So David has a silver account in Overwatch. If he goes to me, because I'm so good at the game, and says, Corey, I'll, I'll pay you money. Here's my account information. Log in and make me Grandmaster. And then give me my account back. That is actually now illegal by law in South Korea. 
right now it's like it's frowned upon in the community here in america it's frowned upon in the community it's a, and, and it's illegal in those leagues I gotta it's get illegal you banned. in the leagues so yeah you'll get you banned yeah. from a league and it's against terms of service for like overwatch for example yeah like you know you'll probably get your account banned so you have to make a whole. You have to buy the game again, make a whole new thing. But now they take you away from your family. <laughs> yeah. Now, now they. It's like, so what's yeah, these kids. Like? It's like, all right, dude. Like screen looking is still a misdemeanor. However, yeah. so. <laughs> screen cheating. <laughs> what this sounds like is that like if you were boosting, not that you would, but if you were boosting and like you were paying somebody, they wouldn't come after you. They would go after the person who is boosting. I who, think you're oh. both illegal. I think it's like because prostitution. Fraud. It's fraud. Yeah, it's fraud. Because the the line or the line the law talks about commercial services. So like if there's a if there's a company if there's a website where they'll, they'll go after whoever owns that company or that website. So they're going after the dealer, not the user. Yeah, it sounds like it at least. Oh, Interesting. I'm not sure. I would say so. Like if, if you're going to a prostitute and she gets busted and you get to walk off free and go try and find another prostitute. That's, why is that's that? Ex right. Why is that where you went immediately? Uh, it's mm. boosting. I mean, I have a lot of experience. It's like if they arrested the pimp. There's a dark period else. of my life I don't talk about very much, but it, it I, I was a, a male prostitute, so I know I know the inner workings. Anyway, moving topics. Yeah. I, I <laughs> You're steering I, the boat. I didn't know where to go from there. I <laughs> That threw me off. I'm uncomfortable. That's okay. Everybody's a little uncomfortable. Uh, thank you guys so much for listening. If you enjoyed this podcast and you're watching us live in the Twitch chat, thank you. Uh, Pocket Asian, Roo Roo 2, Stefan Blood Ocean, J Roms. Who else did I see up there? Drew and the TARDIS was holding it down. Thank you guys all for hanging out. Uh, and if you liked it, go subscribe to the podcast. It's on iTunes. It's on Spotify. Uh, where else are we? iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher. Stitcher. Google. Emma just learned about that. Yeah, we taught her what that was. Um, so Technically you, SoundCloud. But... You can subscribe to the show. Rate it five stars. Type a nice little review. We're almost to 100 reviews. That's actually. insane. And we, we have a five-star rating still. Woo. So the people are like it. Hooli Top 500. Hopefully. Plus. That's the yeah. goal. Hooli so if you, Google Podcast. Thank you so much, Elder... Uh, who is that? Altero 13? Altero 13. There you go. Thank you, man. Uh, and then likewise, if you listen to the show already, you know how to find it. You should watch us live on Wednesday evenings and Saturday evenings so we can hang out and chat. You can be a part of the live conversation. And then we usually do an after show where we just kind of answer more questions, hang out, and uh, play video games. So uh, thank you guys all for that. Uh, the VGB Christmas party is coming up this weekend, and it's going to be an, uh, an all-nighter, baby. I, I don't know when the stream will start. Probably around 7. We'll get it started a little earlier than normal, yeah. and it'll probably go a little later than normal. Uh, basically, what happens is I open up the house as a way of saying thank you to all the people who've put in work to the show. Uh, no matter how big or small, we drink a lot, and then we count down the top video games of 2018, and we're going to be playing White Elephant and uh, interacting with the fans. So it's going to be crazy good. Usually you get uh, you get to see the BTS and all the drunken shenanigans we're, we're going to get into. Here? Yeah. Yep, we're going to have K-pop. KDA is going to be here. Yes. Um, if anything, you want to tune in to watch the decline of Corey because he starts <laughs> the show... Very well, as articulate as he usually is, and then by the end of the show, we're not talking about video games anymore. He's talking about how much he loves people and <laughs> how like screw screw being buried next to his wife. He wants to be buried next to this person, oh, yeah. and uh, <laughs> like all it, it's just watch it for the decline. Just forget the content. Just watch the decline of Corey and make gifts. Are we gonna get a drunk Emma on the stream? No, because I have to drive home. Well, I will buy your Uber and then drive your car to you. You're going to be drunk, too. Yeah, that's what? <laughs> Not that day. Like oh. the next day. <laughs> Jeez. No. Uh, we'll get a designated driver. We'll negotiate. We'll negotiate in the after show. Uh, Are you starting your car right now? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> God. Freaking millennials. Can she it's do cold that? Outside. Yeah, you have that technology. I, I know my car is parked right out front, so I just remote started it from here. Somebody's walking by with their dog and what the fuck? <laughs> Kit. Thank you guys so much uh, for the real David Webb, Curtis Fisher, Emma Skies. My name is Corey. Saying you've just been banged.